Welcome back to Let's Talk Dog podcast. My name is B. I'm the administrator and moderator as well as the co-host for this podcast. And these are the ladies of Let's Talk Dog. What's going on, dog freaks? It's Norka the dog guru coming from my vehicle <laughs> uh, in Florida. <laughs> hey guys, it's Alexis, the vintage dog trainer in Missouri. How's it going, y'all? My name is Amber. I am a vet tech in lovely Florida. Welcome. welcome. I didn't know you were in Florida. I am. Are you near Norca or? Yeah, yeah we're about 45 Florida. minutes. <laughs> and we okay. still haven't met up for lunch. Why not? Dogs, nothing. Well, I'm on my oh, way to town. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, no, <laughs> Just pop up behind you like, hey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be weird at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Just grab her by the shoulder like, hey, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, 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 we did got, do an episode where me about, and Norka kept swapping out, so. <laughs> we've we've talked about it now. We just haven't done it yet. We're procrastinating. procrastinating. Anytime. All right. Radiation. So, Amber, tell us yes. a little bit about yourself. Um, like how to say your last name, because I have uh, butchered it nine times trying to say it out loud. Yeah. Um, so, it's Elalem. It's like phonetically spelled. <laughs> um I guess I don't know it's Egyptian so sorry about that um I'm 27 years old like I said I'm from Florida um born and raised love it it's great sunny it's hot so yeah and you are a vet tech what um what made you decide to become a vet tech Uh, The goal is actually to be a vet. Um, So I want to go ahead and become a vet and actually go into uh, veterinary behavior. Um, I really like aggressive dogs, really like proving to people that they don't need to get rid of their dogs just because it has behavioral issues. And um, the majority of the time, it's simple things that people can work on. They just need to put in the work. Um, And yeah. All right. And what... um... How did you get there? How did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? Because that's like a very kind of vague answer. And I want to know why you decided. What made you think I want to get bit a lot and work in veterinary behavior? Yeah. So <laughs> um, I've I've always wanted to be a vet. That's I mean, it's very cliche. Like I've known since I was a ch- child, but that's literally how it's been is I've always been really interested in medicine in general. Um, and I wanted to go towards the veterinary route because animals are amazing, right? So um, through being a vet tech, I found out that I have this weird ability to deal with aggressive dogs. Um, I am able to understand body language and get things done in the veterinary hospital without having to sedate the dog and, you know, prove to owners that, oh, hey, this person can actually handle my dog when they've had to be sedated and, you know, for every other thing. And just seeing that and seeing it time and time again. And I was like, maybe I actually know what I'm doing. Um, So I decided to just be like, you know what, this is kind of the route that I want to go because it was nice to see owners faces when I was like, yeah, we didn't need to sedate them. We got their nails trimmed. We got their vaccines done. We got all this stuff and they're good to go. I wanted to do that when I was little too. What? Bringing Russell to you for vaccines. He's uh, that's his that's his uh, Achilles heel. What do you call it? Yeah, it's uh, awful. He's terrible with vaccines. Like, I'm gonna bring him to you. Uh, <laughs> right? They're like, excuse me, I have, to, I have to take Bandit down to Florida to get her nails trimmed. Why? Because they don't have to sedate her. <laughs> exactly. My bully has to be sedated because she will try and take your face off if you try and try, try and trim her nails. So it's it does fun. not. It does not go well. The rest of my dogs, I trim their nails myself, but my bully, heck no. Love so what it. kind of animals, no. what kind of animals do you uh, interact with that work? So currently I'm working um, at an emergency hospital. So um, I see just about everything. Uh, the only thing that we don't see is hoof stock. So like goats, giraffes, stuff like that. Uh, but we see just about anything else um, as long as my doctor on staff can treat it. So, I mean, we've seen birds, uh, we've seen lizards, geckos, dogs, cats, obviously. At one point before I worked there, they had a kangaroo come in. Um, so, yeah. Florida. Florida, literally. Gator. Yeah, <laughs> waiting for the day. 
I love that you casually say things like kangaroo and giraffe because Florida. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I you would expect a little bit less, but Florida. No, I would expect no less out of Florida, to be honest. Like, I would be disappointed if you didn't see weird animals like giraffes and kangaroos and gators. Gators are everywhere. It's, it's, it's like seeing a dog. Literally. <laughs> Hard pass. It's too humid for me there. I live in Georgia. Florida's too humid. <laughs> it's kind of the same. So what is the most interesting animal that you've gotten to work on? Um, A skink. There's, it's like a lizard thing. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a fan of them. I mean, they're creepy looking to me. But anyways, uh, yeah, no, they're just, they're different. I mean, you know, you know, you see cats and dogs all the time. Um, and then to have like any kind of lizard in general, I'm like, people own these? Like, this is interesting. So. They're awesome. Of course people own them. That's weird. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not Florida, a... And you think owning lizards is weird? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I grew up around reptiles. They're awesome. I love them. They're awesome. Styles, I grew up around them too. You know, I'll touch them. I won't touch a bug. Don't don't give me a bug. Don't give me a spider. Don't no. <laughs> no. I'm good. I'll touch a I'll touch a mouse. I'll touch sharks. I'll touch a snake. Gator. Turtles. I'm all down for that. But mm -mm. No, no insects. I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it here. Right now. So many bugs. <laughs> there are. But there's also no snow, so that's always a positive. True. I don't know. It got to the 30s and I thought I was going to die. So, I mean. Yeah, I was about to move again. It's pretty cold. To like move Cuba. up here to me where it was warmer. <laughs> it's warm there, right? It is warm. It, uh, the coldest, today's the coldest day we've had. And I think it was like 65. Yeah, it's like 85 to today here. Yeah, that's why I don't go to Florida past this time of year until like November. Fair. That's fair. Norca only gets to see me in the winter. <laughs> I think we made it to like the 40s today. Wow. No. That is wrong. Was the sun out? The sun is out. Oh, no. look at that. They got a nice day over there. Oh, I think it's a beautiful. I went and sat outside with the dog this afternoon. So nope. I moved from Utah. So this is dandy weather for me. <laughs> no. No, just no. I can't with that. Uh -uh. So um, you have a, a weirdly large platform. I guess, what, yeah. What like happened people there? Like what what people brought like you fun. to TikTok? And how did you get a weirdly large platform for a vet tech? The truth. Throwing them facts in. That's how I started following her. Because I'm like, damn, she's just throwing facts. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess. Um, I I was like, you know what? One of these, one day I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to make a TikTok. And it was like, if you scroll all the way back, it's like some really bad thirst trap. Like, it's really bad. And um, so I did that and that didn't get anything. And then like, I had one that got like 40,000 views and I was like, Psh, popular, got this. <laughs> and then I made a series about like what your vet staff really thinks about your pets. And that kind of blew up. And like, from then on, it's just been like insane. Like one of the videos has like almost 17 million views. And I was like, for what? No idea. <laughs> for what? Because it's short, simple, and it's facts, man. <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't know. So then I started like, especially now, I think I just like stopped caring what like, because before when I started, I was like, I really want to make sure that this is like PG and everybody's really happy. And, you know, I don't say anything that's going to like ruffle any feathers. And now I'm just like, you know what? Here we go. <laughs> your your uh, <laughs> followers give you content. Your followers give you content. It's the hunting stuff. And you're like, uh, yeah, that's not it. Let's talk about it. And then once once the, you get the ball rolling, it's exactly. literally your, your own followers give you content. You Exactly. Like I made some, like, wait, no, that's exactly. I made videos on like uh, raw food and like different like breeds and all this stuff. And people get upset about it. And I'm like, there you go. That's exactly why I'm making these videos. Not necessarily to upset people, but because they show themselves in the comments and then they don't realize that they're being made fun of. So. so what is your opinion of raw food? <laughs> 
Um, my opinion from a medical standpoint is that um, if you are going to raw feed, you need to do a hell of a lot of research and credible research, research at that. Um, I don't think that you should just do research that just supports your claim. You should look at research that doesn't support your claim and figure out why it doesn't support your claim. And then at the end of all that fun stuff, if you still think that that is the best choice for your pet, I suggest talking to not only your vet, but a veterinary nutritionist, not just a random person that can go and get a degree in animal nutrition and claim that they know everything there is to know about dog nutrition. Um, because food is very important, obviously, as we all know. Uh, so little minor changes can be very detrimental to your pet if not done properly. Same thing as home cooked meals. Okay. So Just how do you feel about kibble companies? <laughs> so I'm a big I'm not gonna use that there with nothing. No, go ahead. That's fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I will die on this hill. That is fine. Um, the thing about kibble is it's already nutritionally managed. You don't need to add anything to it. You don't need to take anything away from it. It's the easy thing for everyday pet owners to do. Obviously, it's already it already has everything in it that your pet needs in order to survive and thrive. So yes, that's super easy to do. I personally am a big fan of the ones that everybody hates. Uh, I'm a big fan of Hills, Royal Canaan, and Purina. Um, and that ruffles some people feathers and I don't care. Um, I personally feed my animals Hills, um, except for my one spoiled cat who gets Purina because he's a princess, but whatever. Um, but they do well on it and they perform well on it and I have no issues with it. Now people, a lot of people like to take that their pets not doing well on one food means that that entire company is corrupt, but it's the same thing as us not doing well on certain diets or certain kinds of foods. Does that mean that that food is terrible for everyone? No, it just means that your personal body either doesn't agree with it or there's something, you got a bad batch. There's a lot of things that go into it. So, I mean, I'm fine with kibble. Like I said, it's the easiest way to ensure that your pet is getting proper nutrition without having any kind of weird detrimental effect. So why do you support those three brands so strongly? So those are the three brands that really employ veterinary nutritionists. And when I say veterinary nutritionists, I'm not saying just some random bozos off the street. Like these people are actual doctors who have gone to veterinary school and study nutrition. A lot of people like to say that vets don't get um, schooling on nutrition. And that's just not, that's not true. Um, and especially those vets who are veterinary nutritionists, Obviously, with the last board being nutritionists, they got a lot more schooling and um, studying and research on that specifically. Uh, I like, you know, I, a lot of people have an issue with the excessive use of corn or whatever it is. And it's just like, does your pet do well on it? Fine. Great. Do you have, do they have any dietary indiscretions where they're having excessive diarrhea, vomiting, bloating, any crazy skin issues that are indicated to be because of this food? No, great, fantastic, continue feeding it. If your dog does great on raw diets, great, fantastic. If your dog does great, that's the same argument with the whole grain-free diet thing, right? Not every single dog that is on a grain-free diet is going to show uh, any results of having dilated cardiomyopathy or DCM or heart disease. However, the vast majority of cases that are coming in showing DCM happen to be fed a raw diet. And that's why there was this whole, uh, or excuse me, grain-free, not raw diet. Um, that's why there was this big old hubbub about, oh my God, grain-free, what the hell's happening? Um, so it's instead recommended, hey, maybe don't feed a grain-free diet, feed a grain-inclusive diet. And yeah. From the research that I've done with um, grain-free diets, the lack of taurine. So if somebody's doing grain-free and add in, adding in taurine, they're not going to encounter that same problem. You very well might. Uh, you might, you might not. It really depends on the dog and how the dog is able to get that addition of taurine. And like I said, some dogs are able to um, be totally fine. And other dogs, you know, some breed specific golden retrievers, King Charles, uh, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, long name, small dog, 
confusing. Um, but certain breeds that are predisposed to heart conditions, you're still seeing an increase in heart disease because of that. Um, so it's instead of you know saying, oh hey, just add in some taurine, for the vast majority of people, and all of y'all work with people who uh, have dogs who it's just easier to just say, hey, maybe just don't feed grain free. Fair enough, fair enough. Norka, you have any questions? As I co-opted this into the into the land of uh, controversy. Let's do it. So, <laughs> so, are, so are you saying so are you saying to find what, what, what suits your dog and what's best for your dog and just go with oh my the, God, you know, yeah, your dog? Crazy. Yeah, because wow. my dogs all eat different stuff. So I mean that's it's what works for my dogs. Russell can have chicken, yeah. Snoop can have chicken. Snooky can eat a garbage disposal. I mean, she could be a garbage disposal because she eats anything and she's fine. Russell can eat literally anything and he's fine. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. Just yeah, fine. I've, got, I've got three that are on raw and two that are on uh, kibble. One who's on partial raw and kibble and one who's just on regular kibble. And it's having to have found the things that work. Like with Sky, she can't have chicken. If, it, if anything chicken touches her, there is massive losses of hair, and she is a husky. <laughs> there you go. Um, and it's, like, it's the same it's, way. She's a bully. She can't have chicken. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not saying that, you know, every vet that you encounter, every vet tech or any medical professional that you encounter is going to be um, completely against raw food. It's, at the end of the day, you know your pet best. Whatever works the best for your pet, great. Just do credible research. I hate the people who are like, yeah, I did a ton of research. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Can you share some of that with me? And none of it's credible. It's the dog blog or Karen's little poodle had, you know, raw food once and this is how it worked for her. And it's like, do scientific research. Like if you had, like, I just don't understand why people only look at stuff that support their claim. Cause like, oh, that's research. because people, that's because people don't like to look at things that don't support what they want to believe. Exactly. And then, you know what that happens? Then they end up being at a vet and saying, well, Google told me to do this. So you're wrong. And it's like, but what? It just doesn't make sense. It's like my vet, my vet.com. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need to look up the, I need to look up these symptoms. Go to the vet, bro. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. It's like, how often, how many times has Google been wrong about things and then people end up like killing their pet? Not intentionally, but like accidentally. Like you can Google right now and Google, what is the dose of aspirin for my dog? Aspirin is toxic. Oh, hold on, to I'm going to do it. Exactly. Hold on, I'm going to do it. Do I'm going to do it. What is the aspirin dose for dogs? And it's going to give you a number. It's oh my God, bad. it actually just comes up comes up and dogs are different sizes dogs akc oh. hold on we have the akc website that's usually prescribed aspirin for dogs with osteoarthritis and musculoskeletal inflammation but they don't yeah. where, are they, where are they getting these rumors from Exactly. That's, so that's, that's the thing. That's that's your dog's the health. Mer the Merck Veterinary Not Manual recommends administering a ten to forty kilogram milli milli whatever. Makes per kg. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks. The, the thing with aspirin is aspirin is toxic to dogs. You should be giving your pets aspirin and the funniest thing is if you go to like PetSmart or Petco, not like bashing PetSmart or Petco, but they have dog aspirin. That's what happens. Look, I currently have a puppy in his crate having just finished dinner that's uh fixing to have a temper tantrum too. God, she's four years old and obnoxious. Anyways, um, but so like you should see a trainer. Yeah, exactly. You want to come train her? She's yeah. a Mal Shepherd mix. You could take her. Go, <laughs> bro. <laughs> um so yeah no the thing with aspirin so they have it on the shelves and it's like dog aspirin so people buy it because it's like a consumer product and they're like that's what i'm gonna use they sell it at a pet store must be great and it's legit like regular aspirin and i'm like how can you get away with selling this product 
And then people come in and they're like, yeah, I gave my dog some aspirin. And you're like, oh my God, now the dog's like internally bleeding and okay. And then they wash it down with Pepto-Bismol, which you also should not be giving to your pets. Um, there's just so many different things out there that people think is okay to give to your pets and then you're not supposed to. Do not put peroxide on wounds, people. Peroxide will eat away at your dog's skin. Do not put peroxide. I've had God, so many right? dogs. Oh, my dog got a cut, so I applied some peroxide. Holy shit. Although, stop. if they yeah. do eat pills that they shouldn't eat, you can give them peroxide to make them vomit. Yes, only, and it's a certain dosage, and that goes internally. Yeah, it's a very it, small dosage. But I only know you have to be very a, careful yeah. with that because it can cause issues with the esophagus as well. Yeah, the, the only reason why I know that is because I had a dog who knocked over knocked over a, a bottle of pills and ate like twelve of them, and they were my antidepressants. And so I called my vet, and while I was on the phone with my vet, shoved peroxide down his throat, made him vomit, and then took him to the vet. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. You know, it was that stressful. Was He's a dumpster. <laughs> He'll eat anything. God. Yeah. He is 5% golden retriever and it shows. Oh, there you go. That's fine. You're totally fine then. He's been fine. Afterwards, they gave him charcoal food, but he wouldn't eat it from the vet tech. So I had to give it to him. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Charcoal's fun. Charcoal's very messy. It, it, it was gross looking, that's for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't eat it. Like, ugh, they mixed it with cat food. Did not help the smell any. Oh, no, it's <laughs> like, gross. Mm -mm. So if you work in a veterinary hospital, uh, yes. what is the weirdest case you have had come in? We've had some Like, the weirdest, things. like, just insanity. Can we, can we narrow it down to, like, what's the weirdest shit dogs come in with, like, that they have ingested? Like, yes, we'll start there. Okay, the weird so thing dog has come in there with, like, in their belly. Um, last week, so I work in an emergency hospital, so this is like right up my alley right now. So last week we had a dog come in. Um, it had a pretty basic. It had a squeaker in its stomach. We did surgery on a dog yesterday that had like a handful of uh, hair ties. Just eight. A shit. The funniest thing, I have to tell this story though, because it was very funny. And you guys will all get a kick out of this. So it's a um, eight month old Doberman mix. No, he's a Doberman. He's fine. He's an eight month old Doberman. And they know that he eats things. But in the history, and I was reading the history and it made me laugh. And it was like known to eat different things, possibly some hair ties and some like foam remote thing, but is always supervised. And I was like, what? How are you always supervised, but you're you know your dog is ingesting that your dog eat hair ties like yeah. always supervised, always supervised. So then they spent like five thousand dollars on surgery yesterday, but um the dog's fine. I mean, they dogs eat crazy things. I mean, I've seen like corn cobs, uh, the classic oh. underwear. Oh, can I can I say I this, these guys are lucky they even passed this, but. There was a condom. Uh, we had a wedding ring or an anniversary ring or whatever wedding rings. And what was the other one? A kid, uh, kid size six underwear. That one was regurgitated. It's An entire pair. He didn't chew it. Like, I was so surprised that that dog even like, he would, had been there overnight and we're like, he's not drinking water, what's going on? And he starts gagging and gagging. I'm like, and then bleh. I'm like, are those fucking Spider-Man draws, bro? They were Spider-Man draws, bro. I <laughs> six and boys. We had um we had a crazy case come in a couple days ago of this uh cat who um came in and was did the page was that it got attacked by a dog. So we go and grab it and look at it, and this cat's bone is like out of its leg it's like not okay and I was like what is happening so we go out and talk to the owners and um they were like and this is not a thing about like pit bulls or anything I have a pit bull I love pit bulls pit bulls are great they were like yeah we have a pit bull or whatever and um the cat was the aggressor and it's usually how it goes in these kind of cases but the cat jumped on the dog's back and the dog bit the cat's leg and oh man, the cat had to have his leg amputated and everything. It was like, 
Yeah. People, please watch your pets and your children with your pets because uh, there yeah. you go. You cannot, exactly. You cannot leave your animals unattended like that. Incidents will occur, and sometimes just accidents will occur. So, like, yeah. Just don't, one good startle. Don't leave your brand new puppy at home with your adult 13 year old German Shepherd because you're going to come back to a dead dog. And um, puppies are annoying. Yeah. Oh my they God, are. they're so annoying. I have a one-year-old boxer right now, and I love him, but I do not like him right now. Dogs are unpredictable, and things happen, so I think like I, people should be a little more cautious with their animals and their children and with their animals, and their other animals with their animals. Excuse exactly. me, Taro. 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 Taro's, Taro's here to Taro's host the podcast <laughs> to give her opinion of the vet. Yeah. Speaking about cats doing doing naughty. Hi, Taro. No. <laughs> Yeah, Taro is, Taro is a, she picked, like, a good, she picked a good time to pop up because she has taken to playing with the Malinois and that's always supervised yep. uh, and he actually takes corrections beautifully from her but it's always supervised because she's four pounds he is 70 and she's the next he is not done growing <laughs> he's a baby but kids hey Stud. Food aggression. Just a yeah, that four pound cat is food aggressive. Hi. That Hi. in a way that puts my husky a little bit to shame. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Like, I, see, like I, no. I can't do aggressive cats. Like that's not like each each like tech has their like thing that they techs are weird. But each is and I'm sure it's the same in the dog training world or like training world in general. Like everybody has their like section that they just really enjoy and like section that they're just like I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole mine is aggressive cats can't do it give me the most aggressive German Shepherd you've ever seen in your life and I got that give me a little four pound fluff ball who's mad because I just need to poke it real quick not a chance there yeah, same same yeah, luckily like she's I super <laughs> 99 of the time just don't bring out food you can Rooted. summon her from anywhere in the house by opening the fridge. <laughs> Same. And That's yeah, me too. She tried to eat a cinnamon bun the, the, the last time. Like she was literally yeah. like, like inside. Like of her she plate, picked like, her up and she had a whole chunk of cookie in her mouth like, one time. She wouldn't let go. Um, she wouldn't let go. She, let it go. she grabbed um, a she grabbed a bite off of a fork and tried to just take the whole the entire fork and bite. Yeah, so she's she uh, is she is trained like a dog so that I can safely feed her without getting bit because she like she's like you're in between me and the food. Um, so she sits on place and waits for her really started to eat. I must have came from one of those cat fighting ranges. We're all impressed. We're all impressed. And people say you can't train cats. Look at that. And you can definitely train people cats. Definitely you can train anything. He is a, a small calico chihuahua. Full you could have stopped at calico. They're crazy. That's yeah, first. my calico is too, but my calico is like 17 pounds of, uh, of rage and fury if you try and A, pick her up. Uh, I don't even like, my vet's like, I know that you need to bring Dot in. She goes, but I am not upset that she has not been in. <laughs> Just like... Yeah. <laughs> so what got you, I'll, I'll reverse the interview a little bit. What got you, all of y'all into dog training? What do you want to start with? Whichever. <laughs> all right, you first. Oh, you? Me? Okay. You. No, I started at dog daycare literally like eight years ago. Just made my anniversary. Um, yeah, eight years ago, I started working at dog daycare and it kind of just snowballed from there. Um, from the beginning, I was taking like behavior cases and stuff. That's why I learned a lot. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot from different trainers. And then we got, I mean, I got on TikTok just for fun, just to see where it went. Posted a TikTok about harnesses and retractable leashes and everybody went berserk. And I didn't know what I was doing. So I came back to a bunch of messages saying like, okay, but you have to explain. And I was like, oh shit, let me start explaining stuff. So that snowballed from there. Um, I showed a couple before and after videos of some of my harder cases and those kind of blew up on there. So 
And then B started following me. And then I don't know. I, I don't even know how I found Alexis, but I saw her training cats. Saw her stuff. Um, Jonas and everybody else just kind of made a little community of dog trainers there on TikTok. But um, yeah, I mean, likes to that's my soul. on a regular <laughs> basis. Um, I have a two and a half year old white boxer who is fear reactive and forward aggressive. Uh, and so a year ago, I started looking a little over a year ago, I started looking for trainers and we have this many good trainers in my area, um, that don't automatically put dogs on an e-collar. Uh, when I first started looking, I was like, no, you can't put my dog on an e-collar. Now I'm like, maybe when he's a little more trained, um, <laughs> but, uh, I started looking into it and went through a few trainers, um, and, then decided that I didn't want other people to experience the same sort of shitty experience I had of um, feeling incredibly isolated and very alone and like you could never go anywhere or do anything because your dog is a nightmare of reactivity. Um, yeah. And uh, 11's come a long way and I'm apprenticing under Shelly uh, out of England, out of DC, England Training Academy. She's the jungle nook on TikTok. Uh, and the only reason why I have a TikTok platform is last summer, I fucking lost my goddamn mind over the fucking bullshit drama and might have made an angry post. <laughs> yeah, dog training TikTok's wild, y'all. I hate it. I stumbled upon that one. <laughs> These are the dogs of our lives. Next time on Dog Talk. <laughs> Literally. Right, bro. Yeah. To argue. It's like, just watch the video and if, if you don't agree, just keep scrolling. Like, it's okay. <laughs> Nobody's going to be mad at you because he didn't put your opinion in. Three, six, nine, five, two, five, six, five. <laughs> With two followers Alexis. and one post. <laughs> Narka. Alexis, go I'm ahead. I'm done. I was ranting. Uh, also, like, I, I love that everybody finds me from cat training, not from dog training. Yeah. There's only yeah, like I actually cat stumbled cat across cat. her in a live and she had a pentacle on and then I decided that we were going to be friends and that's how me and Alexis became friends. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of forced friendship which turned out to be a good thing because I'm just not going to make any friends but uh no so oof, 10 years ago now I adopted a German Shepherd that uh had really bad dog aggression and went through several trainers and they all were just like you're not gonna fix it you just need to euthanize she's not safe to have and I said no fuck that I'm fixing this myself and figured it out and 10 years later I'm still at it that's awesome I love it yeah my Alexa just flipped on and beeped at me because I said Alexa ah Alexis, I'm trying to turn on her Alexa. Alexis, no, I'm sorry. You can't, I have an earpiece in. <laughs> what kind of videos do you like? I don't like think people the understand most? the emotional. Um, honestly, the, the more that I've done on TikTok, I really, while I'm, I like making relatable content and like the, the, the bad part is on TikTok, the stuff that needs to be pushed doesn't get pushed. So I can make a very serious video about any kind of anything, like any kind of medical thing, any like, hey, maybe you shouldn't be doing this with your dog and it won't get pushed. But if I make a stupid yep, video- it won't, it won't be on my For You. It won't be on my For You page. <laughs> if I make a stupid video about spaying and neutering using like crappy audio from whatever movie it was, then that goes and people are like in my comment section like that but if I make a video about like there's this one guy on there who I won't name names but he um likes to post videos of his Rottweiler not um acting appropriate and thinks that everything yeah. is all fine and dandy and I can call him out and um, either one, my video will get taken down or two, I get like 2000 views. And I'm like, I have not to brag, but I have 330,000 followers. Like it, it has potential to reach a lot more of those people. And it's just not getting pushed, unfortunately. What's going on, Tiki Taki? <laughs> yeah. What was that? 
Sorry, hold on. Hold on, you, we've, I want to see the puppy. Oh my Those goodness. Puppies. I don't know what's happening over there. I don't know either. We're playing make people dizzy. If they watch this, is what's happening over there. I, uh, beeping in there and I don't want to, I don't know what to press. So it's just going to be. <laughs> But yeah, uh, but yeah, I, think you're right, Norca. I think you're right. They don't understand the amount of an emotional stress that a lot of stuff puts on people. Like oh, we live in a yeah, time where right. the internet is our primary methods of socialization and right. the amount of stress that other people can put on us through it is a little startling. Uh, I don't like it. Well, don't do that. You're being keyboard, what is it? Keyboard warriors. Like chill out <laughs> and that's the funny thing though is like especially if you don't respond to the comments it makes people so much more mad oh, and yeah. it's so funny to me it's like all these people i posted a spay and neuter video not too long ago and um it was like there's no reason you shouldn't be spaying your female da -da 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 -da, whatever because like the average dog owner should not have intact pets i'm just and I don't even care if that pisses people off. The average dog owner is not responsible enough to deal with intact pets. That's just the fact of the matter. Um, the average are there dog owner shouldn't have a dog. I did not say that. Anyway. I did. I said it in one of my videos. <laughs> um, but people got so pressed about it. And they were like, you don't know what you're talking about so you want to rip out vital organs and then and then and i'm like the hmm, these are the same people that are like but cropping and docking is fine i can crop my dog's ears and dock their tail but i'm not gonna spay them and i was like <laughs> let's talk <laughs> about unnecessary surgery should we like i have two boxers with dock tails i have no problem with docking for for reason or I mean, neutering I, or neutering yeah i have no problem with neutering either because all of my pets are spayed and neutered it's <laughs> like jesus christ uh, I'm, I'm probably oh, trying out here and uh sen had an ovary sparing space so she still has heat cycles and hormones she just has no uterus uh and the male if he had not been from a rescue he wouldn't be neutered because he's now incontinent you're also not the most average dog owner. Oh, yeah. uh, and and that's where I'm I'm always kind of the odd one yeah. out. And I kind of just take the stance of like I will I just want to have whatever veterinary professional I go to to be open to having a two-way conversation with me. And I want to hear their side of things and their pros and their cons and for them to work with me to help me make the best choice. Exactly. And that, that is super important in finding a vet. And I actually am going to be posting a video about stuff that you need to be doing at your vet um, yeah. within the next couple of days here. Cause it's so important. People are, and I'm not saying every vet is the most amazing person in the world. And I'm not saying like, and I'm sure you guys are like, not every dog trainer is the most amazing dog trainer in the world. You need to ask questions. And I feel like so many people oftentimes take what their vet says as, gold and that's it and they don't care about anything else and it's like if you one do not understand what they're saying you need to ask or two if you don't agree you need to open up that line of communication and be like hey listen here is my credible research can you explain to me why your thoughts on this do not align with this and where that disconnect is and what is what in your opinion is best for my pet and again what is best for your pet may not be the best thing for Fluffy, which may not be the best thing for my dog. Like it's just exactly. medicine is so individualized. And I think yeah. a lot of the time people are trying to generalize a lot of medicine and that's just not the way it works. Right. Yes, there are like treatment wise, the majority of like vaccines and stuff like that. Yes, that can be generalized, whatever. But when it comes to appropriate times to spay and neuter when it comes to if you're going to spay and neuter or it comes to how you're going to treat different things arthritis 
even aggression right. that we're doing at the vet, different things. That's so individualized and it's not one medication is going to fix everything or one little thing is going to fix everything for each dog. So it really, yeah. you need to find a vet that is willing to do individual medicine and not generalized medicine, in my opinion. I got, a, I, I lucked into a phenomenal vet when I moved to Georgia and she's been my vet for the nine years I've lived here and uh, eight years. I don't know. It's been a long time. Uh, and when I, cause 11 is my, is my boxer who's, uh, fear reactive. And when I came to her and was like, he was nine months old and I was like, we need to get him neutered and here's why. And like, I talked about it. She actually argued against neutering him at nine months, um, which was a very weird experience for me, uh, because most vets will push pediatric neuters and spays. Um, yeah. and she was like, it's not going to help. And I was like, I think it will. And she was like, I am a vet. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, you are. She's like, don't, you don't, please don't. <laughs> like, yeah. But I did I'm, it anyway. I just went to a different, I went to a different vet and got a neutered, which was uh, absolutely the wrong choice. Um, yeah. And that but, was the uh, thing with that other video I posted, like people were like talking about how that made it seem like I was for pediatric space and neuters. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Make sure you're doing it on an age appropriate time limit. Go ahead. Are they taking your, your stuff out of context? Is it always oh, having a stick talk? It's tick tock. If I it's say the word pit, everybody takes everything out of context. Yeah, I mean, that's why like I've I've very much stopped saying pit bull. And I'm I how do you guys feel about like the umbrella term of pit bulls? Yeah, I stopped saying it too because I was getting attacked too. Oh, look at that bully breed that B has. Isn't she beautiful? Oh wait, no, that's not yeah, it is a bully breed because she has a bulldog in her. Yeah, look at that bully breed. So cute. They're bully breed. But that's what I just put it on their sheet. I mean, well, yeah. So, so if you say pit bull, though, so many people come out of the woodwork and be like, "Excuse me, there's only one American pit bull terrier," and min, 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 and I'm like, "Okay, so it's a pit bull." But anyways, continuing on with my video, and it's like you're fixating on the word. Or it's a blue nose pit bull. <laughs> um, I would like you to know that Sky is a liver nosed pit bull mix liver nose she's she's got a little liver covered colored nose uh she's uh she's half she's 50 percent husky and then the other 50 percent is american pit bull terrier staffy uh bulldog and boxer <laughs> this is why i would show you the teeth with her massive underbite she's got bulldog in her so that four percent bulldog and that six percent boxer that'll do it yeah Listen, Norco, we can always make a series here. If you want to train my dog, you are more than welcome to. Go, yeah, bro. Let's go. <laughs> I'm always great ready. TikTok content. <laughs> Let's go. We didn't have to tomorrow. Let's hear. <laughs> I'm down you, whenever. You be a schedule and we will get this range because Hey, I'm listen, ready. she's just dog yeah. reactive. That's her biggest that's that's honestly her issue is she's dog reactive. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's great. Like you need, you need, you need the training. Okay. So, oh yeah. I, I a hundred percent need it. Okay. I got it. <laughs> it's not her fault. It's how I react to it, which makes like, it's, it's me. It's not her. It's genuinely. And I think that a lot of people think that like their dog has issues, but I mean, really it's, it's me. So how do I deal with it? Mm -hmm. How does she deal with it? By looking at me and going, oh my God, why are you the way that why you are? Let's both freak out. Like, <laughs> She goes, oh, we're both freaking got it. Fantastic. Are you stressed? Because I'm stressed. Are you stressed? I'm stressed. Exactly. <laughs> That's me and 11. That's me and 11. Although a lot less me now. A lot less me now. It's a lot of people. People get upset with their dog. And then they continue to allow their dog to, like, move forward towards whatever they're aiming at. And it's like. Look, we had a vet appointment and 11 took treats from the vet who stabs him with things. Uh, and I would like to point out that that is an enormous win in my house. Look um, at that. And he laid down and he got, he gave her nubbin wags. What did you do? Like a two week boarding train program or like, did he go to like six classes? Is that how you fix your problem there? No, so you it's been like a year. It's been like a year. A year. Oh, you do. She gives one magic pill once a day and it just fixes everything. Uh, yeah, you that definitely is how that works. No, and like, that's the, that's the other thing is like, so, I mean, when I was in general practice, we did a lot of like, not a lot, but we did like behavioral consults where people would bring their dogs in and be like, my dog's crazy. I need drugs. 
And it's like, you do an assessment and you're like, okay, well, drugs aren't going to magically fix everything, but you can do like a trial period. It's going to take, and the, the issue is people don't realize, even though we say it verbatim, it's going to take six to eight weeks for you to see any kind of changes. Same thing with any kind of mental health medication for humans, you know, it needs that time to load up. Um, and the pill is not going to fix everything. It may oh. give you the outwardly appearance that your dog is like better, sure. But you need, and we always say it, you need to go find a reputable trainer and do some behavior modification training because it's not going to fix everything. And then they'll come back two weeks later and be like, the drugs aren't working. I need something else. I just want to keep drugging it's my like dog. It's like workout regimens, you know? I mean, after after New Year, I give it three weeks. And if it's not working, then what the hell, dude? Why isn't this, you know, slim fast working or whatever the fuck? Yeah, like um, Sky, the one that you just saw, that's my, that's my uh, in-home service dog. Uh, she was on meds for a while. She had really severe food aggression, really impressive food aggression. Um, and, uh, just with, just with other animals, not with people. Um, but, uh, I didn't know what to do. And she had bit through one of my other dog's legs. And so, uh, I went with my vet and went to my vet and we argued for a while. Uh, and I argue with my vet a lot. If you didn't know that we, we bicker quite a bit. We have, uh, but you have that colorful debates colorful debates. Um, and, uh, I got her on meds until I could figure out getting her to a trainer who could help me. Cause that is, that is something that I just had had no experience with, with dealing with because none of no dog I'd ever owned had had food aggression. Yeah. Um, and, uh, she's like, well, you need to find a good reputable trainer. And I was like, okay, do you have any recommendations? And her response was no. And I was like, uh, awesome okay. she was like i recommend going online and doing some research and you're probably gonna have to go out of state turns out i did uh have to go out of state uh there are some good trainers in georgia that's not to say there aren't any good trainers in georgia there just aren't any that are any closer to me than norca who is six hours away <laughs> so yeah it's worth um, <laughs> and uh putting her on meds all it really did was just tamp down her aggression response like just suppress the aggression response yeah. while we, while I tried to find a trainer. Um, and she's still food aggressive, but we work on it every day and she doesn't get to have like anything she's going to resource guard that she doesn't get to have out with the other dogs. Um, and it's, it's Wait, super fun. Managing but the situation as it goes. Yeah. We just manage it. We manage it. I know how to manage it properly yeah. now, which is nice. Um, she gets fed in her crate or from, or from my hand. She doesn't get any other options. Um, and it's, it's a hard thing to manage. And I think a lot of people don't realize how has that prevented food fighting? aggression has can that, be. Has that prevented fighting? And Oh, sweet Jesus. No, that has not prevented fighting in my house. Mm -mm, no, I have five dogs and all of them are 50 pounds and above. So, you know, there's going to be disputes and plus she's gotten food aggressive over stuff like, um, about a month ago. Uh, so right here, I have a dog bed. This is where Sky sleeps when I'm working. This is, this is right here. Um, well, she also takes her snacks here when she's given snacks and the other dogs aren't out. She'll just take them over here and sit down. Um, and uh, my cat went near her. She lost her mind. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I've gotten very fast. Um, the other one was a uh, bandit was walking past and bandits, my, my bully mix, my other bully mix who actually looks like a bully mix as opposed to Sky, who does not. Um, and she uh, she got a hold of Bandit and she tore up right here and she bit through, she bit up her ear and then she went into isolation for a week. That was fun. Nice. Yeah, it doesn't stop it in my house, but it yeah. we manage it as best we can. Yeah, when you have a house full of dogs, you have to be careful. And I a lot of people try to, combined our dogs and just you know put them all together they all get along because they're dogs and it doesn't it doesn't work out that way usually my boys are frequently separated from my girls uh, because my boys are all just under two and a half or younger and they're all obnoxious and they're all annoying and my girls are three and five and they do not want that obnoxiousness in their face <laughs> Fair so enough. They do not frequently get to spend a lot of time together, but 
that is because I don't think that they should have to put up with a puppy right here all the time. Amber, what's your favorite, what's your favorite breed? I am a shepherd person through and through. I yeah, give me all the shepherds. Who needs to be uh, adopted? Well, using the shepherd. That's Listen, a shepherd. Give me the shepherds. <laughs> give me the mallies. Give me them all. I'll take all of them. <laughs> Your least favorite. He's a good boy, but he's a little sloppy. No, we're not going on the least favorite because you know what's going to happen is I've done these videos before where I'm like, oh yeah, these are my favorite breeds. And they're like, what about your least favorite? And then people get pressed. And um, hers, Norka's least favorite is fucking Huskies. They're just a rude. I love training them. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love training them. But I, I would rude. never in my life own a Husky. Like, who, why? Why would you do that to yourself? I'm good. Good. I own boxers and a husky mix, and they are my two favorite boxers and huskies are my favorite breed. And uh, I am the person who most frequently people are like, I dislike these breeds the most. And I'm like, great, those are my favorites. Yeah, give me the pities, give me the shepherds, give me the malinois, give me all those. I'll take every one of them. I'm definitely, I'll just, I'll put it out there. I'm not a small dog person. I've had one small dog in my life. He was amazing. He was fantastic. We'll probably will never have a small dog again. Definitely a big dog kind of person. I'm afraid I'm gonna kick him or step on him because I'm, gonna teach you to do, I'm a I'm lumbering gonna teach you to do work. <laughs> Um, what do you, what's your uh, take on doodles? Oh, we got the eye roll, folks. For the ones that are just listening, we got the eye roll. <laughs> if you if you can't if you aren't watching the video, she rolled her eyes. Listen, we Hold need to face. stop breeding poodles with every dog breed. We have to stop. We have to be better in society. Frenchy doodle. Chihuahua Literally, doodle. Like, give me a pit of doodle. I said that yesterday at work. I was like, I, I want a pit of doodle to come in. <laughs> exactly. Please but, do I not. Mean, an, Amer an American Staffordshire doodle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Can't even call it a pit of doodle because people are going to be like, uh, no. It's so, a bully doodle. <laughs> exactly. So, no, I mean, the dogs themselves. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. That's fine. They didn't ask to be born. Um, the issue is the people who spend thousands and thousands of dollars on this purebred dog and then ignore every medical recommendation out there um, because they just spent $5,000 on a dog and don't have any money left for treatments. Um, so the, and I've made, I've made a video about this before too, is that the, my issue with doodles is not the dogs. It's a hundred percent the owners and the breeders um, who are just trying to make a buck. So. 100%. You have any dog was being rude. for us? What was that? Do you have any more questions for us? Um, hmm. You guys each have different training styles, I'm sure. Um, where do you guys think that those discrepancies lie? Where do you guys think that there's that deviation between the you guys as far as training? The media, what gets put out there, what people push, you know, all the bad between stuff. Between the gets... three of us or in general? Between the three of you guys. Okay, between the three of us, Narka. Um, I don't know. I'm still learning. That's fair. I think, I think there's a lot of mixed up just in the media, what people are putting out. Um, and I'm talking about just like treat commercials and stuff like that. Cause you know, your dog doesn't need 800 bags of treats in the house to, to train, but people go out there and buy 800 bags of treats and then go to Petco and, or edit that and then go to pet stores. Okay. To train an, an aggressive dog. And you know, it's, I don't know. It's, there's a lot of confusion happening out here. I think there's, the there are seven different kinds of, kibble on my shelf that I rotate through for treat for treats for training there you go and you have five dogs they're all I do good. have five dogs no but I think um like good trainers trainers actually know what they're doing I mean positive reinforcement is 95 percent of the work like and for some reason there's a there's a divide because we do have compulsion we do have purely positive people out here trying to train dogs on just purely positive um, and there should always be a balance, you know, there's, there's gotta be a balance in order for dogs to, to thrive and your dog learning something a certain way doesn't mean that my dog's going to learn something a certain way. 
and people don't understand that oh i went to the pet store and got six classes for 100 bucks and you know and the trainer did great and you know my three-month-old puppy did awesome oh sure i'll take my one-year-old aggressive rottweiler there and see how how, if i could do six classes like you know it's not it's not the same so just like in vet tech in vet in the vet world there's different there's it's a spectrum so you guys got where where your dog belongs on that spectrum and where you want to be and what you're comfortable with and a lot of people are pushing treats you know sorry a lot of people are here just pushing treats and pushing you know a certain agenda when you know a real dog trainer a really good dog trainer knows what it takes to train a dog and a trainer that focuses on rehabilitation and behavior and you know aggression and all that good stuff and you know that's their niche. That's their, that's their specialty. It's not going to be, you know, a pet coach trainer or a pet store trainer is not going to be able to tell you what's wrong with your, you know, aggressive two-year-old, you know, Pyrenees because they're, they're trained to follow a certain training style and mm-hmm. a certain, they're not allowed to do certain things, including, you know, telling your dog no when your dog does need to hear a no, you know, when your dog, dog, dog needs to be given different options. And, you know, a lot of people just get stuck in that, that whole, you know, that's trained a certain way and you should find a way that works for you and your dog. Like, period. I agree. Just saying. <laughs> I have a very serious question for you, Amber. Oh God. If you were a dog, what kind of dog would you be? Corgi. A corgi. A corgi. A corgi. It's a corgi. I just see a corgi. <laughs> Um, honestly, prop, I mean, personality wise, I mean, obviously I want to be like, yeah, I'd be a German shepherd. No, um, I'd probably be a golden retriever. I'm just very stupid and just, <laughs> I don't but like fine. learn quickly. So it's great. Yeah. There's just not a lot going on up here. Um, and I, there's, yeah, but you're you know, lovable. And exactly. You're just lovely. lovable, affectionate, but like not, maybe Nothing. just don't have a lot of common sense. Like I run into walls a lot and just like, you know, just clumsy. So I'll, I'll go golden retriever on that. I, I, would be husky. <laughs> I would be a husky, loud, smart, but loud and uh, not particularly fond of people. <laughs> <laughs> and a workaholic because anybody who's ever owned a husky and seen them work knows that they are workaholics. There you go. Nor is a Jack Russell. 100%. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Alexis is a cat. Alexis is a cat. <laughs> All right, guys. I got to wrap it up. I got to go. Yeah, we got we to gotta wrap it up. Thank you so much for being on with us, Amber. Um, we will put all of your socials in the description box of the podcast. Um, awesome. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, Thanks for hanging We will put guys. our own socials below, but, too. So... Norka, you got anything else you want to say? Oh, I was just making making call me signals at Amber, so she called me. Amber, yeah, call Norka. Let's hang. Let's hang. Right. <laughs> Let me know. All right. Well, lovely. Thank you all for yes. listening. Uh, this has been another episode of Let's Talk Dog Podcast. Uh, y'all have a wonderful evening. Thanks, guys. Later, folks. Bye.